Welcome back to Oval Window Garage. Here today, we're gonna to do a tech video. And we're gonna be talking about something that I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> I know, what's new? <laughs> Bring it down here. We're gonna be talking about clutch and pressure plates again. And I got a set up here. We'll, uh, I'll explain what's going on here in a second. If you recall a few uh, videos ago, uh, probably over a year ago, I did a, a talk on pressure plates and clutch discs where I was using the old uh, torque wrench method on uh, trying to figure out when, you know, pressure plates and clutches will have a breaking point or a break free point. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't get much out of that video because this old uh, black magic uh, clutch disc I was running, you know, was slipping like crazy off the line. But yet in the video, I don't know, maybe it's because I had cleaned my uh, uh, pressure plate up a little bit in the uh, flywheel up a little bit you know this thing's still out held the uh, standard Dakin disc and the ceramic disc I'm using right now this here is an example of the Dakin uh, disc you know I ran this thing for years and I don't know why I don't go back to it uh, the only reason this one was slipping on me is because you know I had a little bit of an oil leak uh, surface between the flywheel and the crank but I've taken care of that so maybe I'll put this thing back in or a new one Right now I'm running a uh, Kennedy uh, six puck ceramic disc in. Now I'm actually kind of liking that one too. Uh, but the reason for this video, I cleaned up here a little bit, grab this dirty rag, clean my hands. The reason that I'm kind of making this video is just kind of expand on that uh, pressure plate clutch disc thing a little bit. I had sent you guys over in my last video to Tom Simpson's uh, video on, he had a whole different way of uh, measuring um, pressure plates. and. You know, it was a really quick video. It was a really good educational video, but <laughs> there was math involved and you know, he really didn't show his measuring point. So I'm gonna try to expand on that a little bit and try to see if we can come up with anything and, you know, maybe make some improvements. Cause I'm still really not happy with uh, the setting on my pressure plate. I've always had a problem with this car and I'm kind of trying to narrow it down. I think I kind of got an idea of what's going on. But it always seems like when I set, you know, the, the book tells you to set so you have, you know, about three to five thousandths play between your uh, throw out bearing and your uh, pressure plate. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about this surface against this surface. Uh, there should be a little bit of play where you can hear uh, when you're setting it, there should be a little a little click. It's, it's kind of hard because you got to reach up underneath the car and there is a spring on the clutch lever. But you got to kind of overcome that spring and you should be able to hear a click. But it always seems like when I set my um, clutch that way, I'll kind of explain this so you guys can understand it, that I still have like shifting problems. It just doesn't quite seem like the pressure plate is releasing enough. And I always have to go, you know, give it a couple of uh, extra turns for everything to be all right. But I think I'm losing that, that air gap. So yeah, let's move on uh, <laughs> to measuring this thing. So I kind of show you guys what I got going on here. Okay, pull pants up. I've got the rig set up here, show what we got going on. This is kind of like what uh, Tom was showing. He used a, of course, I got this in a 20 ton press and he had a different valve spring uh, measuring tool. This is the newer version. I got it, I think at Summit or Jags. That was hundred and some dollars, I think. He got the pressure plate, throw out bearing, you know, a little spacer here. And I believe he, he really, this is the part he really didn't show, but I believe he had uh, the pressure plate on a flat surface here. So before we get started, we got to do some measuring. Yeah, I'm prepared. I got the measuring tool across the room though. I'll be right back. So we'll just use a standard set of uh, micrometers here. And I think he got a measurement from the bolting surface of the uh, pressure plate and the mounting surface or the flat surface. And we got 627 thousandths. So we got to write that down because I will not remember it. Now this is a tricky part because when you're pushing on the the uh, clutch, the metal surface in here is actually what's going to move because this is mounted. But we're going to have the opposite effect because we've got the moving surface down here. So now the mounting surface is going to move. So we just basically got it opposite. So we are going to watch the numbers. This is the fun part. And you got to make sure you get the 
throw out bearing centered on there. It'd be nicer if I had the, a different, should have probably used a new clutch because it's still got the ring on it. But we're gonna go to the numbers, quit moving. And it looks like we are there. Nope, that's gonna go up a little bit more. We got three. Probably about 350. And then Tom took up to, I don't know if it's going to do it here. This always makes me nervous. There we go. That's now the numbers start going down. So we're going to jot down that that was 350. After, we'll go 350. And Tom's theory was that's, you know, the fatigue of the metal. He said when the pressure plates get older, you know, they will lose pressure. And this is a, well, it's a semi-used pressure plate. I only used it one season. Oh, before I, <laughs> before I lower it, we need to get another measurement. So now it should be smaller. And we got 504. Now for some math. That's where the measurement of this comes in. To measure this, this measures 329. I know what I'm missing here. I forgot. We need a flywheel. I just happen to have one line over here. You can see the flywheel? Let's turn the light on. Yep, that light works. Bend you down so you can take a look at the flywheel. Freshly ground flywheel. So now on the flywheel, this is where your pressure plate bolts to. So we need a measurement between this and where the uh, clutch disc rides up against. All right, that number is 829. So we'll write that down. All right, so we had 829 minus basically 520. And that's a difference of 309, okay? So our clutch disc that we measured, measured at 350, I believe. Yes, yeah, so we measured at 350. So there's, you know, roughly 40 thousandths difference there. And that's where Tom is saying you kind of need to shim the flywheel back. But I got a, <laughs> with all this math is confusing, and I've got another thing I'm gonna show you here kind of make it a little easier to understand and comprehend. But I basically sacrificed an old, uh, Flywheel, a good old German flywheel. I don't know why I did that. That's probably gonna hurt in a few years when it's harder to find these things. But um, I had my buddy over at uh, the Weapons Collective Edge, Doug, actually cut this open so we can get some measuring points. So I'm gonna reset this jig up and to give you guys another uh, look at what we got going on here. Okay, got it set up. Got the flywheel that I sacrificed. Um, basically, I'm doing the same thing. So for this time, we're gonna see uh, the clutch plate um, surface move instead of the, the flywheel mating surface move. You guys can see in here, it's a little harder to measure this. We're gonna actually measure uh, the surface, the flywheel surface here, and the uh, clutch disc surface. I'm going the wrong way. Course. There we go. We got 236. Okay, time to start pumping. Where did I set my uh, jack handle down at? Oh, way over here, of course. So you guys watch the numbers. more out of it. I don't know why. Just got a hundred pounds more out of it. All right, starting the fatigue. Let's get our measurement. And it's a 306. 
I'm thinking he just used a calculator again. But basically, that opens up to 306. Basically, uh, I think what it came up with before, doing it the uh, Tom's way. We'll, we'll just run the numbers again, because I forgot to write down. That's why you write stuff down. Originally, I had 829 minus, what did I say? We went with the 520, just 309. So yeah, about three thousandths of difference. But that hopefully gives you guys kind of a a visual. And for some reason, we got a uh, hundred pounds more uh, pressure out of it. I don't I don't understand that. Maybe it's because we're moving it the right way. I don't know. But uh, next, I'm going to actually put the clutch disc in there, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run it up to where it kind of wants to fatigue, and I want to see if it spins. And then I got some shims. We'll shim it up to what the difference is and uh, see if anything changes from there on. So I'm gonna jot down that we've got 450 on this pressure and see what happens. So yeah, give me a second here to set back up. All right, set back up. You can see the, uh, the clutch the disc is in there now. So the idea now is we're just gonna run it up. Can't measure with a um, clutch disc in there, but I wanna see, I can actually turn the, the clutch disc in there after we um, put all the pressure on it. So, yeah, you guys probably want to see this. This is the fun part. All right, yeah, it looks like we, I know for some reason, lost a little bit of pressure there. I'm not really sure what happened with that last reading, but we are now back down. We did, didn't even make 350 that time. Got a input shaft out of a transmission, you know, sacrifice itself into a tool now. And we are going to see if this thing will spin. Put that up in there. And <laughs> shockingly, it does. I wish I could uh, actually, I don't know, I can hear it scraping in there. But it, yeah, it's got, I bet you I could stick some feeler gauges in there. So I'll back up here. <laughs> so now, we know we roughly need about 40,000. So I got some of these shims over here. It's a product of uh, the dub shop. Come in, I think they were 15, 30, and 60 is the range. We're going to, I don't know, we figure we need about 40,000. We don't really have a 40,000. I mean, you could double them up. We could put the 30s and the 15s in there and give us the 45,000. But let's start with just a 30 right now and see if there's any difference that happens. Uh, we might be surprised, we might not be. But yeah, I need to reset the jig back up. <laughs> okay, we're back online. Okay, let's watch the numbers again. The fun part. We were just a tad under 350 last time. All right, we got our 400. That's where it starts to go down. And to me, that's kind of telling me something that They'll gain over uh, 50 pounds of uh, pressure just by um, shimming it out a little bit. Expand that a little bit more. Let's put the 60,000 shims underneath there and see what happens after that. See if it stays relatively the same or if it goes up or if it goes down. And I don't know, maybe we're on to something here. <laughs> Let me set this jig back up and uh, we'll play with the numbers again. All right, we're set back up. Got the 60,000 shims underneath it now. And let's see what happens with our numbers. See if anything changes. All right, starting to fatigue. And yeah, we're almost 450. Let me read that a little better. I'd say about 440. Which one of those lines are? One, two, four, six, three, four. Yeah, each one of those lines are 10. That's uh, it's at 440. And what did we hit last time? Should have wrote it down, dummy. Hit 400 last time and hit the review. But we're going to write that down 60,000 shims or 440. And another thing I didn't do was uh, check to see if the, at the, at the 15,000 or the 30,000 shims that they uh, they actually spun. You know, I should actually stick feeler gauges in there, but yeah, I'm sure there's a difference. 
But y'all see if it spins, how easy it spins. You guys watching? Oh yeah, look, there's definitely a lot of release room in there. Uh, yeah, definitely a lot more, uh, a lot more room in there. I'm gonna actually uh, put the 30,000 shims back in there. I kind of want to see if uh, how that feels when it spins and where we were at with the number. See if I should have jotted it down. I didn't. I'm not that great of a scientist, I guess. But yeah, 440. We're on to something, I think. Okay, back with the 30,000 shims in. Let's see if we get the same, close to the same reading. I think we had 400 before. Everything just moved. I better double check, make sure we're all on there. Doesn't look bad. Looks like we're fairly centered with the socket. Yeah, it tops out at 400. So we'll write that down over here in our notes this time. 400. Oh, I got about that. Cause that's pounds. Let's see if it spins now. Yep. A lot less friction, but I almost think I really like the feel of the 60 thousandths in there. Granted, uh, we're still probably 10 thousandths, 9 thousandths off of uh, the measurement says we should be. So, go with uh, the 15 and the 30 or just put the 60s in there and run it and see how it is. I mean the first thing I should do is, uh, <laughs> we got Simon's engine sitting right there and this is not the pressure plate I'm running at the moment. I actually still have this clutch set up on there. So the best bet is to take that back apart, you know, see what kind of shape a one season did on that ceramic disc and you know, do the same process all over again with his. But yeah, I think I found something out. But granted, we have more pounds of holding pressure. Well, that might not technically be holding pressure. That's more pounds of release pressure. <laughs> it seemed like the clutch disc was more released with the 60,000 shims in there than with the 30, which would make sense because we're still like 9 thousandths, 9 to 10 thousandths off of uh, what we probably should have in there with the 30,000 shims. Using the cutout flywheel, of course, is just for me my way of explaining to you so we had a visual. Of course, you're not gonna to wanna to do that to your, your flywheel. <laughs> but yeah, you're gonna to have to probably do the whole math thing, you know, because granted, all flywheels should be probably close to the, you know, grinding the same. They've been ground a few times, you know, they're supposed to grind the same amount they do off the clutch pressure plate mounting surface versus the clutch disc mounting surface every time they regrind them. But, you know, there's always gonna be flaws you know, it's just a fact of life. Definitely, uh, you know, measure your flywheel, what we we got, your clutch disc, and, uh, you know, how much your uh, pressure plate um, surface moves. You know, those numbers are gonna give you the answer or what you should be shimming your uh, pressure plate out to. You know, maybe you don't need to shim it. Maybe you do. You know, all pressure plates, clutches, and flywheels are gonna all be a little different. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully we learned something here. But yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna leave you guys today. Uh, if you have any questions, um, bleep, bloop them down below. Maybe I can answer them, maybe I can't. Maybe there's someone else out there smarter than me. Well, I think there's a lot of people out there smarter than me, but um, that could answer. I hope this was kind of eye-opening for people. It was kind of eye-opening for me. Obviously there was a difference of pressure with the uh, different shims in there. But hopefully this will cause the uh, clutch just to last a little longer. You know, I'm really disappointed in this black magic. Everybody talks it up and I didn't have any luck with it. You know, granted, it probably wasn't set up properly. Um, probably should have started out with a new fresh ground flywheel and a fresh ground pressure plate and I didn't. Not having it shim properly was probably the uh, downfall of the whole thing. I guess now I know. <laughs> so keep cruising, keep shifting those gears and always enjoy the ride. I'll talk to you later. Before I was just another guy. Look at me now, I'm way up high. Six twenty-seven minus one twenty. It's five oh seven. I remember how I'm trying to remember how to comprehend that. <laughs>
That's all confusing to me. So I came up with kind of a, a better idea here. Oh no, wait a minute. I know what I'm missing here. 